Bloopers have always been a part of basketball, but it wasn't until the NBA's 1989 direct-to-video release Dazzling Dunks and Basketball Bloopers that in-game fails became almost as popular as spectacular highlights. The film was soon followed by a second installment in 1990, along with a number of other similar releases over the years. But it wouldn't be until the early 2010s that the NBA would produce a regular program that revolved around celebrating the lighter side of the league. Good day, sweet world! NBA champs! Previously known as the Basketball Joneses, The Starters was a podcast, blog, and television program that humorously analyzed the NBA, which ran from January 2006 to June 2019. The show was written and hosted by Phil Elder under his stage name J.E. Skeets, along with Taz Mellis, Lee Ellis, and Trey Kirby. Additionally, behind the scenes, the show was shot, edited, and produced by Jason Doyle and Matt Austin. The show was broadcast on NBA TV from 2013 to 2019, though its origins date back much further. Mellis, Skeets, Doyle, and Austin first met while studying radio and television arts at Toronto Metropolitan University in Canada between 2001 and 2005. Mellis was the co-host of a weekly talk show called The Sports Doctors, which aired on TMU's internet radio station, while Doyle produced the episodes. At the same time, Skeets also hosted a show on the station, though it wasn't sports-related. After graduating, Mellis worked as a story editor at the Sports Network, while Doyle found work as a sound editor for Supersonics, an audio post-production house in Toronto. Meanwhile, Skeets worked at a physician recruiting firm, while Austin attended law school at McGill University. In 2005, Skeets began blogging after a friend bet him that he couldn't write a post every day for a year. The blog was called J.E. Skeets and was a mix of topics relating mostly to the news of the day. Later in the year, Skeets wrote a post about basketball that got linked on Deadspin. Skeets immediately noted a significant spike in traffic, which led him to writing exclusively about basketball, usually with a humorous perspective, planting the seed of what would eventually become the starters. <laughs> Turn him around! Turn him around! <laughs> Eventually, given the popularity of his blog and his experience in radio, Skeets decided to use the fledgling medium of podcasting to produce a basketball-related talk show. He approached Mellis and Doyle with the idea, and together they worked out the tone and format of the show, which they titled The Basketball Joneses, after the song Basketball Joneses featuring Tyrone Shoelaces by the legendary comedy duo Cheech and Chong off their 1973 album Los Cachinos, Jones being slang for addiction. The podcast debuted in January 2006. The original format consisted of a half-hour show once a week, which they recorded at Doyle's house. The podcast was characterized with offbeat segments that set them apart from other such professional podcasts that revolved around basketball. Each episode consisted of segments dedicated to NBA events that happened both on and off the court, with emphasis on a fan's perspective of each situation. The show soon gained a small but dedicated fan base. As its popularity increased, the group began recording shows more frequently. At the start of the 06-07 season, the Basketball Joneses began producing daily with 15-minute versions of the show, which they called The Fix, that involved the group talking over Skype, while a full half-hour episode was recorded on the weekend with all the group members present at Doyle's residence. By the 07-08 season, the Basketball Joneses had grown significantly in popularity, which prompted them to move the production to a more professional setting, as they began recording daily 20-minute episodes from the Supersonics Productions headquarters. With a combination of the improved quality of the production, word of mouth from fans and critics, and Skeet's growing popularity as a writer on Deadspin, the Basketball Joneses reached a whole new audience, which saw them become one of iTunes' top 100 most popular podcasts. Towards the end of the season, Skeet's was hired by Yahoo Sports to write their basketball blog, which he renamed Ball Don't Lie. For the 08-09 season, the show became a video podcast, with episodes shortened to 15 minutes. Kirby joined the team in 2010. Prior to joining the group, he had been a longtime fan of the show and had been active in their comment section. But it was the publication of his book that year, The Blowtorch's Big Book of Basketball Facts, that caught the group's attention. In March 2010, the group announced that they had officially joined The Score, a Canadian multimedia sports group where Ellis worked producing content for various sports. After volunteering to help the group out at every possible opportunity, Ellis was officially made a member of the team in 2011. Meanwhile, Kirby began contributing to the Ball Don't Lie blog before taking over the role of editor after Skeets when the Basketball Joneses joined the score. 
Later, during the 11-12 season, the Basketball Joneses made a deal with the NBA to produce content that would feature on the league's channel and website. During the final episode of the 2013 season, the Basketball Joneses announced that they were leaving the score due to their uncertain future with the network after Rogers Media bought out the company's television channel but not their website or mobile assets. Despite the upheaval, the Basketball Joneses assured their fans that the show would continue in one form or another. Then, in early October 2013, it was announced that the show would be relaunching on NBA TV with new episodes airing later in the month under the name The Starters. The Starters have become the newest members of the NBA TV family. Well, what's the Starters, Ernie? It's EJ Skates and uh, Taj Mahal or something like that. Upon joining NBA TV, the entire group moved from Toronto to the NBA headquarters in Atlanta. The new show took on the form of a 30-minute program, which aired each weeknight during the NBA season. The show's format remained about the same as previous incarnations with a few minor changes, specifically making the content family-friendly. Admittedly, the group found that going from a podcast to a TV show took some getting used to, but the show eventually found its rhythm. Each group member had their own distinct quirks, catchphrases, or gimmicks. The show soon became notorious for its irreverent take on the basketball world from the perspective of hardcore fans. Additionally, the show featured a number of distinct offbeat segments, such as Crossfire, for which two of the group members would battle to give the best answers on various topics. Welcome. The Pick'em Playoff, where the loser of the monthly picks contest had to endure something embarrassing or difficult. So yeah, the they're not too mushy, so you can't just shove them in right? like that. Uh, you know? I gotcha, yeah. And Weekend Whoopsies, a blooper reel. Yeah. Come on, put on your shoes. <laughs> this is overtime in a playoff game. <laughs> a real game. Uh, the show would also occasionally have NBA players on as guests. However, typically, the group would get the individual in question to play other types of games, rather than have them take part in stock standard interviews. I'm not trying to say, I don't want to do that <laughs> thing with Vince Carter. So it's pretty right, simple. Let me work Vince. my way through here. More than anything else, The Starters was characterized by its relaxed nature. This is because, although the show would have an outline of what they wanted to cover over the course of an episode, it was always unscripted, which was polarizing for basketball fans. Despite developing a loyal and respectable sized fan base, the show still received a significant amount of hate mail, given the seemingly unprofessional nature of the show that led many viewers to believe that they and their friends could easily do just as good a job as the group if given the opportunity. However, in reality, the show involved a significant amount of research and planning to produce a single episode despite its ostensibly unprofessional nature. Ultimately, during the show's run on NBA TV, it became a staple of the basketball world and even altered the culture itself. Most notably, the group's use of the term wedgie for when a ball gets stuck between the rim and the backboard, which became the unofficial term for such an incident among fans and even broadcasters. Still, despite the show's impact on the league, it would eventually and abruptly come to an end. In June 2019, it was reported that NBA TV would cancel the starters at the end of the league season. At this point, the show had ran for six years and had produced more than a thousand episodes, yet they had only ever attracted a cult following. So, now that the group's contract had come to an end and NBA TV were focused on cost-cutting, they decided not to renew the starters. Fortunately for the group's loyal fan base, it was also announced that the team had already begun talking to other media outlets about continuing the show in one form or another. One, two, three. Oh, no. <laughs> In October 2019, it was announced that the team behind the starters would join The Athletic and launch an NBA podcast that same month under the group's new name, No Dunks, which would be posted outside The Athletic's paywall. During this transition, Austin left the group to pursue a writing career outside the basketball world. Like with the starters, the show featured the group discussing various subjects relating to the NBA and the daily news events impacting the league with their distinct quirky style. You, you want to be subtle, but stylish. You're very hard to pull off sure. with the thong, you know? It's the wrong kind of attention. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. However, while the chemistry was still there, the show definitely wasn't the same, as it became more about the group talking amongst themselves, like they had in their early days, rather than the polished, highlight-heavy gimmicks that they were known and celebrated for back when they were on NBA TV. Understandably, while the group retained a number of their hardcore fans, their views were significantly less than they were when they had the support and the reach of the NBA behind them. When the group signed with The Athletic, terms of the deal included an option for the team to pursue a separate deal for video content, meaning they could partner with another media outlet to reboot the starters. However, as of July 2022, given their diminished viewership, the future of the group, specifically their incarnation as the starters, is all but officially over. All right, folks, we may see you, we may not. Enjoy the game.
None of the members of the starters had had any actual experience in professional basketball, and none of them ever claimed to have inside information. So, instead, the show relied on the distinct personalities and chemistry of the members, and it was these things that separated them from other NBA-themed podcasts. When the group took their talents to NBA TV, they quickly tapped into a niche audience in the basketball world, one that, while respecting the serious aspects of the game, also celebrated the intricacy and the absurdity of the culture around it, with all the bloopers, tantrums, and strange off-court events involving players. Unfortunately, although the show was loved by those who found it, the starters never quite managed to attract widespread viewership, which ultimately led to its downfall. However, on a positive note, the group was still around, producing content together. Understandably, the format isn't as polished as it was on NBA TV, but the chemistry is as strong as ever, as they celebrate and analyze the league from their distinct perspective. So, despite the odds, given that they started from nothing, producing podcasts early in the morning before their day jobs, there's always hope that the team will once again achieve the heights of success that they saw on NBA TV with the starters. This is overtime in a playoff game.